During the mid-19th century, utopian fever swept across New England as agrarian communes were founded to promote collective living, equal distribution of labor, gender equality, and social reform. Seeking alternatives to the alienating effects of industrialization, some of the best-known communities, such as Brook Farm and Fruitlands, both in Massachusetts, were connected to transcendentalism, the progressive philosophy and social movement that expanded from Boston in the 1820s and 30s. Places like the Northampton Association of Agriculture and Education were also centers for abolitionist activities, hosting leaders such as Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass. Certain utopian settlements also devised new methods for childhood education. While these communities were short-lived and flawed, the practices of self-sufficiency, social reform, progressive education, and spiritual communion with nature continue to evolve, remaining relevant to many artists today. In much of their work, childhood becomes a utopian projection, an idealized and amorphous state of being. In other artworks, symbols of education, reading and writing signal the potential of building new worlds in one's mind. Utopian fiction in New England is a particularly rich genre, and the exhibition features several early examples, including Edward Bellamy's Looking Backward, in which a Boston man falls asleep in 1887 and awakens in the year 2000, in a world where private property has been abolished and all industry nationalized. One of the most popular books of the 19th century, Looking Backward impacted later scholars and politicians, including the education reformer John Dewey. Another of the more controversial utopian novels is B.F. Skinner's Walden II, which imagines a self-sustaining communal society named after Thoreau's Walden. The book inspired the formation of over three dozen post-war utopian settlements across the United States in the 1960s and 70s, such as Twin Oaks, which still operates today in Virginia. Founder of the Boston Visionary Cell, one of Paul Lafley's central concerns was the search for utopic space. He explored this through paintings and proposals, such as this 1973 design for a New England center of a comparative utopia, which was to be located at a site at a roller coaster in Revere Beach, Massachusetts. Lafley's paintings pulsate with fervent energy. His canvases are composed of concentric patterns, futuristic symbols, and passages of hand-applied vinyl lettering that connect utopian thinking with instructions for time traveling. Lafley understood his works to be functional devices, repositories of knowledge or compass roses that direct the viewer to higher states of consciousness. The paintings that I've included in the Visionary New England show are works that I lived in for several years. Some of them started in as early as 2008 and even existed in different iterations, more simply as landscape paintings than as these sort of complex figurative narrative conditions. Those configurations were about this way in which sociality is almost always inherently pedagogical in that sense that we're always sort of learning, mimicking, and exchanging ideas, and through that exchange we're constructing our sense of self and our sense of identity. My paintings are very much about all of these people being incredibly vulnerable, what one could think of as like a kind of superfluous nudity that sometimes happened in my work. It's never superfluous for me. It is always about saying the truth about bodies and being as forthcoming and vulnerable as possible. And I think that's the closest thing I can think of that could express an idea of, of utopia for me.